excellent, excellent documentation on hidden services. So I really encourage you to go to the Tor project website. The URL is up there, but it's really easy to find if you search for it and check it out. They have great documentation both on how it actually works in implementation and how to configure it. Um, I'll give my two or three line uh, explanation of it, which probably is incorrect, but I would encourage you to read that instead and don't listen to me exactly. But essentially when you start a hidden service that advertises to the Tor network and uses a, a public key in order to communicate with relays, the first relay it communicates with will be its induction point to the network. Essentially what that means is if somebody wants to get to your box, they have to get to him ultimately to get to your, ex uh, not to your, ex no, to your hidden service. Um, and it's, if anybody connects to the Tor network, they're going to go through and say, hey, I'm looking for this .onion domain here. Uh, ultimately, someone will say, oh, just talk to this host here. This is where you want to go. That's a really poor explanation, but that hopefully that gives you an idea of what, how this all kind of works. Not really kind of. So just show you how simple this is to set up. I have a couple lines from, a, uh, from the Tor RC sample they provide that shows you all it takes to set up a hidden service. Uh, there's two parts. There's a hidden service directory, which is important because that's where it gives you the actual host name for your new hidden service or hidden hidden service server, and the uh, private key so people know to communicate with it, be able to trust it, and be able to uh, use it ultimately. And then the other line is the hidden service port. Um, this is very simple. It's just like creating a firewall rule for many different firewalls out there. You provide it the port you want to run on. In this case, they're using 80. So it's a, I can pretty much assume it's a web server. And the web server itself on the system is running on localhost port 5222. Once you just put those in your Tor RC file, restart Tor, and then everything will work just fine. So there's one paper I want to mention called Locating Hidden Services by, I'm going to butcher their names, uh, Overlier and Cyberson. I'm sorry I butchered them. Um, I really recommend checking out this paper. It's a very good paper taught that they did a few years ago regarding introducing uh, malicious Tor nodes into the network to help to try to and actually expose the hidden uh, the hidden services or the servers running hidden services directly. Um, it's a pretty long paper. If you, I would actually encourage you checking it out if you plan on using hidden services, just so you're aware of the risks that actually could come into play. It's a few years old now, so I'm not sure if it's all 100% accurate, but I, I think it's still worth a look because it's probably not far from where we are today. If anyone ha knows any further on that and wants to correct me, please do, because I, I haven't looked at that too much at all. So I'm going to change gears here for a little bit. So I love this image because it pretty much sums up how I feel about when you combine Tor and Zeus. If you can't see it too well, that's a uh, skyscraper-sized Chuck Norris fighting a uh, equally huge Mr. T with the caption of, God never intended for these two to meet. So just to give you a little background in case you're not familiar with Zeus or Zbot or WNS Poem or whatever your AV company decides to call it, it's, uh, it truly is the number one crimeware toolkit in use today. Uh, actually, I'll go to my next slide early. Uh, Dancho Danchev uh, made this great twit, or t uh, tweet the other day, or last month actually, saying that there's a monoculture, monoculture in the cybercrime ecosystem thanks to Zeus. And he's very much right. Uh, that there's everything you see is Zeus. And if it's not Zeus, it's probably just Coopface or one of the other big ones and then a whole bunch of random stuff. If you look at the volume of Zeus out there, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and the th important part about it is it isn't a single botnet in itself. It's a toolkit that's, be that's used by many people, whether they purchase, purchase it directly from the Zeus, Zeus authors, whether they found a leaked or stolen version that they're using, which is very popular. Um, but everybody's setting up their own servers themselves, their own command and control servers, and making their own bots on their own, and distributing these as however they see fit. So. When, you, when I, oftentimes when I read about like oh a new Zeus campaign, it's probably a whole new group doing it. It's really hard to uh, attribute who's doing what with the different Zeus campaigns going out going on out there, because they're all there's so many of them. But I would say that outside of the few big ones we've heard of, like the Never Botnet earlier this year, which is just one organization's Zeus campaign, and uh, some of the other big ones whose names I don't really recall right now, there's probably a lot more people doing it than it sounds like. So I would really. Really pay attention to that when you're reading the news and be aware that there's more than just one botnet out there called Zeus. Um, but what it is is it's primarily focused on stealing banking info. Um, it can steal anything you want. Whenever I demo it, I have it stealing a uh, Sock Puppet Hotmail account, which works just fine. Um, it can configure it to steal from any website. 
Uh, but pretty much everybody who uses it is trying to steal banking information. Um, and it's really easy to configure. Anybody who is familiar with HTML really can customize it to, or to do whatever they want. They have these things called web injects. So what, what it does is it intercepts the HTML being rendered. So you can say, oh, well, I see the Bank of America username and password. Throw in a field for the uh, debit card number and the CVV so I can get that too so they can log in. And it really just takes that data. It looks seamless on the page and reports back to the uh, user. They do a lot of updates to make sure this stuff keeps working and works well. And uh, it really does. It, a lot of data is stolen through Zeus every day. So to get back to more of how we're going to be using this, here's a sample configuration file from a version of Zeus uh, 1242. It's a little older now, but it's still uh, pretty relevant. There's four lines here that are of interest to us. They're the URL lines, config, comp IP, loader, and server. Uh, this is how you would normally set it up for a normal Zeus configuration with the default parameters. I'm using the domain of badguywalmart.com because that's where everybody goes to buy their malware and their toolkits and whatnot. Uh, and then we have the couple things in there. The config.bin is the configuration file where uh, the, the bot will go update itself and get more information for what it's supposed to do. And uh, gate.php is the actual uh, command and control page where bots will check in and let the uh, command and control server know, I'm alive, here I am, here's my information, here's some data, stuff like that. So where does Tor come in? Let's get back to where we're supposed to be with this. Zeus on its own doesn't support proxies. Uh, we can't just say, oh, just go to the .onion domain and uh, hit our hidden service. That doesn't work at all. Um, and it, it Zeus only allows for regular URLs, pretty much anything you can hit normally with your web browser you can, is what it's looking for. It doesn't have any kind of proxy support, not the Windows proxy or anything. So we need a little intermediary solution here. And there is one that is free and works pretty well. It's called uh, Tor to Web at tortoweb.com. Uh, what this is, it's not a part of, it's not affiliated with the Tor project at all. It's a third party tool put up by some individuals whose names I've neglected to include on the slide. They're at the bottom of the web page if you want to check it out. And uh, what it is, is a web page that will redirect requests made to tortoweb.com with the right uh, .onion hash and uh, send it along, uh, they'll send along through Tor themselves and return you the results, it's just like a, any other proxy. Um, it's, uh, and it, they also provide scripts so you can set one up on your own. So if you say, well, I like Tor to Web, but I don't trust them, I'm going to stand up my own and uh, do all this myself. That, it's pretty easy to do. It's just a couple of configuration options, Privoxy, Squid, Tor, obviously, and, and uh, one script they provide, and that's about it. So the way we're going to be doing, using this is we're going to be doing the command and control over Tor to Web. So what we'd want to do in the in the, uh, the Zeus configuration we just saw a couple slides ago is configure the bot to connect to that URL there. So what you'll see is the first part of it is the hash from the .onion domain .tortoweb.com. So that would be, if that's the right hash, that'd be your command and control server. So what will happen is the bot will connect to tortoweb because it just sees it as a regular URL and then be directed via through them to the hidden service at the .onion domain, which is our command and control server. Very simple and very effective. So as I mentioned, here's the, the main script they have, and all it really does is reformats request to Squid saying, hey, where it says tortoweb.com, make that dot, un, dot onion, and go through Tor. And then when it gets the results, it returns it right back to you. Really simple. The configuration for it is really hardly more than this script alone. So very nice. So I'm going to attempt a live demo of how this works. I've been fighting with this all day today, so I'm not too confident that it will actually work. So uh, we'll pretend it does if it fails. I just want to tell you about the setup I'll be using. I have Zeus 1241, I think that's the right version, which is a uh, from about mid-2009, give or take. Uh, it's an older version now, but it's one that's been leaked and it's easily, easy to find on the internet, so you can just go and find a copy of it and make your own botnet. That's nice and convenient. Um, for the command and control server, I'm just using a regular Ubuntu server setup with the uh, LAMP package installed. Um, I'll be running a hidden service on port 80, nothing too special, just like any other web server. For the uh, for the host I'll be building it on, building the Zeus binary on and executing, I'll be using Windows XP SP2, uh, which will just, I'll just go through the configuration files on there. And if this all happens, we'll log into the control panel and see a bot that has gone through Tor, through Tor to web to get there. So I expect this to fail, but we'll see. So here's, okay, I have to get on the network first. This is where I've been having problems all day. As I've been disconnected from the network, I've been, uh, having big problems getting everything to work right. So 
bear with me for a moment here. This is really exciting. If I don't connect in a full short time, I'll, we'll just pretend it all worked. In the meantime, I'll show you the configuration file. So this is the configuration file we, be, we hopefully will be using. Is that okay? Oh, that's probably a bit big. All right, so here, here we have here, the same thing we saw before with the uh, config and the server. But what we have here is simply just putting in the tar to web uh, URL. Nothing too fancy, nothing that exciting, but it's effective. And am I connecting at all? So what I've done earlier is I've actually built the right version. This is the uh, Zeus builder uh, for version 1242. I was off by one. Um, the current versions look very similar to this if you hadn't seen it before. It's, this is what they're paying four grand for, this in the web control panel. Um, when you click, so that's a nice thing too, or if you, ha you actually have Zeus installed on the system, uh, which they consider spyware, you can click a button and remove it right from the system. But I'm clean, fortunately. So, uh, and this is the builder, very easy. You just click build config and that builds the config file, which it was it, the that we saw in the configuration file. Just load that up onto the uh, Zeus command and control server. I've done that ahead of time, uh, but it's that's, it needs that to know where to go download it. It doesn't even have to be on the same site that you're actually hosting the, con the uh, control panel on. It just has to be available somewhere for it to download. So you can set up, say, another hidden service on another box somewhere and put your config file there. As long as you have the right URLs, it'll know where to go to pick it up. And then when we build the loader, this actually builds the bot executable itself. Oh, I'm on the network. Let's see if we can do this. So as you see here, we have the, it's probably really hard to read, but we have the URL config and the URL comp IP where we have the Tor to web URLs we saw before. So it knows where it's going. And let me see if I can get the rest of this working. Start tour and hopefully this will all just work. So I'm going to execute the bot now. If you can confirm where the builder says, oh, we have version 1242 installed. Fancy that. And we'll go into Firefox to see if we can get to the control panel. If we do, then there's probably a good chance this worked. If we don't, then oh well. So we'll give this a moment. So it is ultimately going through Tor, so it isn't the fastest in the world. Tor has gotten a lot better recently if you haven't used it much. It's still, you're still giving a performance overhead, but really the way I look at it is that's a small price to pay for actual anonymity and uh, definitely worthwhile. This will probably work best if you're using a smaller botnet, uh, maybe a couple hundred hosts, but if you have a much larger one, this probably won't work out too great right? where you have a single uh, host hosting all your bots. So. We'll give that a moment and see if that works. Probably not. Actually, we'll just come back to that later. We'll move on. So I'm sure that'll fail when we go back to it, but let's assume it did work for now. Um, so there's strengths and weaknesses to this approach. Uh, the strengths are, like I said, it hides the command and control server. The only way you're going to find that out is if you can actually like, use some sort of attack, like present in the paper I referenced earlier, or have some way to get into the server itself, make it expose its IP which that's going to be pretty hard to do, I think. Um, it'll be really hard to track down as a result. You won't know where you're looking for it. Um, so with this being the case, hopefully the command and control server is virtually immune to being taken down. Now the weaknesses, I'm sure you've all thought about this ahead of time, it's really easy to filter this traffic. If you have any kind of HTTP filter or even you know, block the IPs they're hosting it at, you're not going to be able to use this method. This is going to be really easy to get to take it out. And also trust, like I mentioned, you don't know what they're what they're logging at Tor to Web. You don't know if they're logging anything. I would hope they're not, by the way they're presenting their service, but you don't know that. So you don't want, you probably don't want someone knowing where all of the bots in your botnet are coming from, because that may lead to them being taken down pretty easily. And uh, running your own Tor to Web proxy is definitely a better option. It's not really hard to do, but you need to have some place to run it. If I had some bulletproof hosting somewhere and I wanted to do this, that's probably where I'd consider running it and probably not anywhere else because I'd still have to give it a domain or at least I have an IP to point at and it's still a single point of failure. It could be taken down and then you're back to square one. So really quick, I'm just going to see if that worked. <laughs> 